Hey there guys, welcome to the video. My name is Pushpinder Gill and uh, in this video we're going to be talking about uh, the confidence intervals for the regression coefficients, right? So we're going to be talking about the confidence intervals for our regression coefficients. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Quite a lengthy uh, Title there. All right. So uh, let's let's assume uh, we have uh, a kind of a regression equation that y is equal to let's say we have uh, the value of alpha plus beta x uh, plus you know we have the xi plus the yi plus the error term, right? So this is kind of a regression analysis that we run, and we want a value of beta. Let's say this is beta hat. Or let's say this is y hat. We want uh, I'm sorry, not y hat, it's x hat and you have i here and you have i here. Now we want our value of beta hat to be as close as possible to the actual population parameter. Right, so that's what we want. Now if you watch the basic uh, introduction video on confidence intervals, you would know that either we calculate the value of beta hat or we actually construct some confidence intervals. Now, from our video on uh, normality assumption, uh, we actually define this variable that is uh, actually equal to the value of beta hat minus the actual value of the population parameter divided by the standard error of the beta hat, right? So this is what we define. Now, what is standard error? Standard error, which is uh, something that is the standard deviation divided by the under root of summation of uh, the values are uh, under root of the summation of x i square, right? So that is what was standard error was, right? So uh, if we substitute the value of standard error into this, so we're going to get the value of uh, this variable to be actually be equal to beta hat minus beta population over the standard deviation uh, into under root of summation of x i whole square. Now what's the meaning of this? You know, why have I done this? Now, if you watch the normality assumption video in which you would know that, that, uh, you know, our uh, OLS estimators, beta 1, are all OLS estimators, beta hat and alpha hat, they're something which are normally distributed, right? So, they're something which are normally distributed and uh, we know since they're normally distributed, we, we know their means, we will know their variances, we kind of know everything about them right so what we can do here is that we can actually use their probability distribution their probability distribution and when and what we can do is we can actually construct a probability distribution for beta because we know the probability distribution of beta hat so we can actually construct a probability distribution of beta population now this can only be done if the value of uh, you know, if the value of this standard deviation in no, is known uh, or the value of variance is known, right? So that is something uh, that can only be done if we know uh, the population variance. So let's say this is the standard deviation, the square is going to be the variance. So if we know the population variance, then only we can actually go ahead and construct the, you know, we can go ahead and construct the, uh, you know, the confidence interval for that, right? So if we were to construct the con confidence interval of a normally distributed variable, so we would say this is how the normal distribution looks like, and this is the mean, right? And this is the mean plus standard deviation. This is mean minus standard deviation. So you know this is 34%, this is 34%, this is 14%, and this is 14%. So this is mean minus 2 times standard deviation, this is mean plus 2 times standard deviation, then we have plus 3 and minus 3. So we know that, uh, you know, if, if we were to talk about this whole thing, so uh, mean minus standard deviation till mean plus standard deviation is going to contain 68% 
of the population, right? So we can actually construct the 68 percent. Uh, you know, that 68 percent of the times, uh, my value of population parameter will actually fall under here. Since if I want to construct a better one, I can say mean plus two times standard deviation and mean minus two times standard deviation. That is about 95 percent of the population, right? So you know, we can actually easily construct the confidence interval for uh, using for the population parameter because we know that this is something which is normally distributed. However, the value of this standard deviation is rarely known, right? For the whole population, it's very, very difficult for you to find out the standard deviation of the whole population. So then what you're going to do? So then what you will do is that you will, instead of using the uh, actual population parameter, what you will be doing is, you will actually be using, so instead of using this, you will actually be using its unbiased estimator that is actually this, right? So kind of a hat on the top, right? So, you know, so what we'll do is we'll replace this by this in the equation. So instead of z, I'll call it t. So instead of z, uh, instead of z here, what I'll do is I'll actually call it t, which is actually equal to the beta hat minus beta population over the standard error of beta hat. Now this is something which is, now this over here, it's our estimator, right? So this over here is our estimator. And uh, this over here is something which is fixed. You know, this is something which is our parameter, right? Uh, divided by this over here is the standard error. So that is the estimated standard error of the estimator, right? So that is something what we have is the estimated standard error of the estimator. Now, if we were to open this up, we could get the value of t to be equal to beta hat minus beta population into uh, under root of summation of xi square over the value of the, uh, the you know, the, the unbiased estimator, right? So now what do we have here, right? So uh, now we know that the standard area of, the standard error, this is the standard error of, uh, uh, you know, of the population, right? So now I'm I'm not going to talk about the derivation here, but something that uh, we can something that is there is that I'm going to be talking about is derivation in a separate video. This t variable, so this t variable, uh, it's actually going to follow. So it's it's going to follow a t distribution. So it's going to follow instead of a normal distribution, it's going to follow a t distribution, right? Uh, and we can actually construct a confidence interval like this. We can say the probability of minus t alpha by 2 between t and uh, t alpha by 2 is actually going to be equal to 1 minus alpha. Now, don't panic. We're going to understand what this means. So, what does this actually mean? So, t is, the, uh, t is in the middle over here. And uh, t alpha by 2 and t minus alpha by 2 uh, you know, are the upper and the lower lower bounds, and we have the alpha by two as the level of significance, right? So we can have alpha by two as the level of significance with n minus two degrees of freedom. So we have n minus two degrees of freedom, right? So if you don't understand what are degrees of freedom, what is a t distribution? There's a separate video for that that you can actually watch. Right. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this T with this over here. So I'm going to replace this T with this over here. So I'm going to have the probability of minus T alpha by 2 is less than or equal to beta hat minus beta population over the standard error of beta hat. Right. Uh, less than or equal to T alpha by 2, which is actually equal to 1 minus alpha. So this is what we have right now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to multiply the standard error both sides, right? So that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the standard error to that side and I'm going to take uh, the standard error to the other side as well. So this over here is going to be probability. So I'm going to take the standard error to both sides. So this over here is going to be minus t alpha by 2 uh, times standard error of beta hat right uh, less than or equal to beta hat minus beta population right and uh, is less than or equal to t alpha by 2 into standard error of beta hat 
So that is actually equal to 1 minus alpha. Right, so this is what I have here. And uh, if we rearrange this, uh, you know, I'm just going to write down the end product, which is very simple. That probability of uh, that beta hat, uh, I'm sorry, beta hat minus t alpha by 2 into standard error of beta hat uh, is it's actually greater than, okay, it's actually gr less than or equal to beta uh, population is less than or equal to the value of t alpha by 2 into standard error of uh, beta hat uh, times, sorry, not times, plus the value of beta, the value of uh, beta hat, right? So that is what we have. So this is something which is equal to 1 minus alpha. Now this over here provides, provides us a confidence interval uh, for beta population, right? So which can actually be written as uh, the value of beta population. So the confidence interval for beta, uh, for the confidence interval for beta hat can actually be written as B, uh, you know, sorry, the confidence interval for beta population can actually be written as beta hat plus or minus t alpha by 2 into standard error of beta hat. Now, as you can clearly see that the confidence interval directly is directly dependent upon the standard error, right? So the confidence, the width, the width of the confidence interval is kind of directly proportional to the standard error. That means the larger the standard error, the wider would be the confidence interval. So, you know, again, putting in some other words, I would say that, you know, the larger the standard error of the estimator, the greater is the uncertainty of estimating the true value. Right. So, uh, you know, so, you know, so from here, what we can say is that standard error is kind of like the measure of precision. Right. Of the estimator. Right. So everything depends upon the standard error. We have to minimize the standard error as much as possible. Now, similarly, what we can do is we can actually construct. So uh, for uh, for beta population, so the, for beta population, it's nothing but beta hat plus or minus the value of t alpha by 2 into standard error of uh, beta uh, hat and for alpha is going to be alpha hat uh, standard error of alpha right so this is the confidence interval for our uh, you know population parameters right so i've taken beta hat yeah right taken alpha hat. okay so these are this is the confidence interval for the regression analysis right so I'm going to use an example here, right? So let's suppose I want to use an example uh, of the same education and wages example. So we have our wages here and we want to define the effect on wages by the education. And we got the regression equation to be something of the sort, let's say, that uh, we got it to be alpha, something the value of alpha, whatever it is, into 0.736 of beta, sorry, 0.76 of x. Uh, plus the error term, you know, so that is something there. So we got the value of beta hat to be actually equal to 0.736. And let's say we got the standard error. So it's just a assumption that I'm making. Let's suppose the standard error is 0 0.07, right? And let's suppose there are 13 observations. So n is equal to 13. And, uh, right, so, so that is there. And we have, uh, since there are 13 observations and we have 11 degrees of freedom, right? So that is what we have. Uh, because the degrees of freedom are always n minus 2. And let's suppose we assume the value of alpha to be 5% and we want to create a 95% confidence interval, right? So a 95% confidence coefficient. So what we'll do is with 11 degrees of freedom, we'll actually find out the value of t alpha by 2. So we'll actually find the value of t alpha by 2 using the t table uh, that you would be having. So, you know, let's suppose the, the value of t alpha by 2 over here, it's, uh, if you use the table, it's actually 2.201, right? So, using this, what we can do is we can actually construct the confidence interval. Uh, let me say this is, uh, you know, just for the sake of convenience, let's suppose this is 740, right? So, let's say this is 740. So, we can actually construct the confidence interval for beta population is that it's actually going to be between 0.57 and uh, it's actually going to be between 0.878. So if we just construct that, right? So if you just put it in this expression right here, 
right? So if we put it in this expression, this is what we're gonna get. So I, what I'm what I'll suggest is you guys go ahead and try it all by yourself, right? So you know, so you'll be able to understand it. Or in fact, if I were to try it, uh, it it you know the for beta the for beta population, it's beta hat plus or minus t alpha by two into the standard error. Uh, so this is gonna be equal to 0 0.7240 plus or minus 2.201 into 0 0.0700. So that is what we're gonna get. If we kind of solve the plus value, we get this. If we solve the minus value, we actually get this. So what do you mean by this confidence interval, right? So what is the uh, meaning of this confidence interval? Uh, so that means that out of 95 out of 100 cases, what is going to happen out of 95 or 100 such confidence interval? So this is a confidence interval for just one sample. Out of out of out of 100 samples, or 95 samples are likely to fall, uh, are likely to have the value of population parameters under it. Now understand, don't go with the misunderstanding. Don't think that 95% uh, of the times our uh, pop value of the population parameter will fall under our confidence interval. No, that's not it. That means that 95% of the times we will be able to construct, so we'll be able to construct the confidence interval We'll be able to construct the confidence interval, uh, which will have the value of beta population uh, under it, right? So it's not that because the value of beta population is something which is fixed. How can you say that you know it will have a probability? It's something which is fixed. Only random things have probability, and con confidence interval which is random because it deviates from sample to sample, right? So you know I suppose you're understanding this point over here. Uh, and uh, so that would be about this video guys so thank you very much for watching this video uh, this would be our website address to explore this would be our Facebook page to give us a valuable like so thank you very much for watching this video I suppose you understood this in the next video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding out the confidence interval for beta 1 and beta 2 simultaneously right so sorry for alpha and beta simultaneously so thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one